Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sin and Tonic. Today's story is that of the Curry Killer. Say what? Let's go. Sin and Tonic! Hi guys, I am feeling slightly better yet again, but just not, not quite there yet. So do bear with me if my voice is croaky or I cough or something. You know, you never know. Or if I've got a crusty nose. Oh, God, sorry, dear my. We are going to London Bay, May today. Yeah, this one is a wow. 2009, January. Now, do forgive me with the names if I pronounce anything incorrectly. On the 27th of January in 2009, please bear with me, I'm going to read the name. Lakvandir, Lakvandir Chima, apologies, 39. His, his nickname, by the way, ironically, is Lucky. He was at his flat in London with his fiance, Kurjeet Chow. So sorry if that's incorrect. She was 22 and they were at his flat in London having dinner. Leftover curry, to be exact. Literally a few hours later, a few hours after eating their leftover curry for their dinner, Lucky was in the hospital and he was dying, and they didn't know what was going on, and his fiance was incredibly unwell, really poorly. She was dying too, actually, in fact. Lucky had called 999 himself, and it's just, it it must be terrifying. It must have just been, like, you can't imagine. So they started to experience pins and needles. They started to vomit. They couldn't walk. They couldn't walk. And also, like, Imagine if that's happening to you or just the other person that you're with, that's weird enough, isn't it? And like scary enough. But to both both of you to just be like the same thing going on, that's really, that must have been really disturbing. Interestingly enough, on that 999 phone call, Lucky actually said to the operator that he felt, he thought his ex-girlfriend had poisoned him. You know, he's got an inkling of what has gone on here. He managed to get some family members to take him and Khajiit to the hospital and sadly he he passed away. He did pass away when they were in the hospital and the hospital then put Khajiit into a, a, a an induced coma to try and help her and try and save her life. So while it was too late for Lucky, they ha- they were able to flush her system. So while she was put in this medically induced coma, they were able to flush the poison out of her, out of her body. Turns out that Lucky was correct and that the curry that they had eaten for their dinner, the leftover curry, that had been poisoned. It it freaking had. So he was right. So the reason that they think he had he had died and that Khajiit had survived is that he had a second helping of the curry. So they both ate their dinner and then he went and got seconds. And because of that, he ended up ingesting more of the the poison. Just hours after Lucky's death, they actually did arrest his ex-girlfriend. He'd said himself on the 999 call that that is who he was suspicious of. So they went to have a chat. She was called Lakvir Singh. Again, apologies if that is incorrectly pronounced. So the story behind all of this, because it's 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 one of it's like a tale as old as time. She was a jilted lover. She had been in a relationship. I'm gonna call it a relationship because they had her and Lucky had been basically having an affair. She was married, Singh was married, and They had been having an affair for 15 years. That's more than, that's, okay, technically it's an affair because she was married, but that's a full on, that's a relationship, man. What the deuce? 15 years. Her husband would go to India quite often and whenever he was there, they would hook up and yeah, proper, yeah, she had, she had him on the side. 15 years. What the deuce? Again, like, who has got the energy for this? Like, two relationships. I know that basically she was spending time with Lucky when her husband was in India. So, but still, still got to maintain that relationship when he's there, I suppose. And it's just a lot of effort. It wasn't always a smooth and happy-go-lucky relationship, though, by any means. So in their 15 years of affair... Singh fell pregnant twice with his baby. 
So she already had three children with her husband and then she had these two pregnancies. Now, Lucky would say to her, you need to have an abortion. So he he forced that issue because he said it would just bring shame on her and him. It would bring shame on their families. I think from what I've what I've read, she wanted this to be she wanted to be with Lucky. She wanted that to be their relationship. And it wasn't really what he wanted. Just messy, isn't it? Just messy. The real kicker, the real now in the coffin, the real jilted lover situation. Now that came in 2008. Lucky would call things off with Singh because he had met somebody else, Pajit, and oh, she was 22. So he's he's like 39, she's 22. And he's decided to, to marry, marry her instead. And he wants to end this affair because I mean, it's not you know, it is an affair. It is a relationship as well. You know what I mean. But it's a, it's been a long old time. But he wants to settle and he wants to be with Khajiit. So yeah. So I don't think it probably helped matters that she was a hell of a lot younger. Singh herself was forty five. This began this just rage, woman scorned. Singh has been in this relationship, having this affair for 16 years. She's fallen pregnant twice with this man. She's always done what he's asked. It started this sort of thing in her mind where if she couldn't have him, nobody could have him. That sort of mindset. Not long after this breakup, Lucky actually ended up being in hospital for a week with suspected poisoning. And the only thing that he could really think of was that he had eaten a meal that had been prepared by Singh. But nothing really came of it. He was in a week is a long time to be in hospital. So he must have been quite poorly. Because here, if you're like the minute you, you're all right, you're out. Like, go, 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 go. We need the bed. So to be in hospital for a week is a is a big deal. So he must have been really unwell. And he he had his suspicions at that point that Singh had actually poisoned him. And then a month later, Singh went on a trip to India and then she came back and then the events unfolded on the 27th of January. So what happened? Well, earlier in the day on the 27th of January, another tenant had actually witnessed Singh enter the flat and open the fridge where the curry was being stored. So that's suspicious. And when she was arrested, Singh actually had a bag, a small brown bag on her person. She said it was some sort of ointment for a rash that she had. But when they tested it, it was actually the poison that had killed Lucky. It turns out that when she had gone to India on her trip, she had gone and acquired a certain poison. Let me read out the name to you. So it's called Aconite, also known as Wolfsbane. Oh, I've heard of that. I have heard of that. Oh, God, I can't remember where. Similar to cyanide. Oh, oh. OK, so this is what happens. It it stops internal organs, including the heart, from working properly. And then it causes death by asphyxiation. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, it's different to kryptonite. Not kryptonite. Flip me. Cyanide. As it causes you to become paralysed but the victims are conscious. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, because he said he couldn't. they couldn't walk and stuff like that. So what a horrible drug. So she'd got this in, in India. On How do you get that back in? Mm, that was hidden well then, wasn't it? On the 10th of February 2010, Singh, Singh was convicted of murder. She was also found guilty of grievous, grievous bodily harm to Khajiit. She pled not guilty. She was given a life sentence with a minimum of 23 years. And I believe she was acquitted of... She was also had charges against her for attempted murder from before when he'd ended up in the hospital. But she was acquitted of that. I guess there wasn't enough ev evidence. But what a case. She was so angry. Because also, the other thing that I was thinking in this case about how dangerous it is, really, how dangerous she is, is the fact that she... She, so she went over to India and purchased that, what's it called? I've forgotten the name. 
kryptonite. She purchased that. She got that to bring home. So it was a very, very premeditated. And also she'd already tried and failed. So whatever she'd used before, when he'd called it all off, she was really, really angry, wasn't she? So she'd already had a go and it failed. And then she thought, I'll tell you what, I'll pop over to India and I'll get, you know, this stuff. It's, it's bonkers because it's so premeditated. It's so planned out. She was she tried and then she was like, nah, and then she tried again. So she really, really wanted him. And I think the first time he was the only person that was poisoned. But that might have just been pure luck. You know, you never know. Because she might have been like, I'm not hungry tonight or whatever. But the second time, she surely, she must have expected that, she must not have cared whether Kirshi was also a victim of hers because she really easily could have been. So that could have been, she could have, she could have killed two people there. Very cold, isn't it? Very cold. I find the whole concept really frightening. You know, if I can't have you, no one can. Or was it just pure, you know, not so much that thought process, but just a real, real, real deep anger. Oh, yes, I think I've got some witness, uh, like a witness statement, impact statement from Pajit. Here we are. I'm just going to read some of that out for you, some of her words. So she said, I believe she should be given, this is about saying, I believe she should be given the sternest sentence possible so that it deters anyone else from even considering doing this to another person. I'm going to sneeze. Wow. Oh, my eyeballs nearly came out. Woo! She went on to say, I'm still under a lot of stress. It preys on my mind all the time. The time I spent in hospital was a very difficult time for me. And also knowing that your fiancé has, has died as well. I did not speak English. My family were not there with me to take care of me. And I felt completely alone and isolated. Oh, I still do not feel fully recovered and I believe it will affect me for the rest of my life. She goes on to say that she wasn't sure if there would be long-term damage to her organs and things like that. She goes on to say as well about the fact that she'd only known him for three and a half months. I think the marriage was like arranged and she says though that even though they hadn't known each other for very long he was in an important part of her life because in that that was they had spoken about the fact that they were going to marry. They were planning their wedding. They were going to get married on the 14th of February. That's cute. And they planned their life and they were going to have children and things like that. So, you know, just because somebody has only known somebody for a short amount of time. So they're in their culture. This is what they were going to go on and do. They were going to have their have their wedding, which they were planning and excited for. And they were going to go on to have a family. And she said that, all of that was then taken away from her because of what had happened. Also, having only known somebody for three and a half months, coming here, not knowing any English, and like that's all of that is a really scary, like, and isolating thing on of, of its own. It it's just a, that's really tragic for her because what a what an experience to have, and just a tr massive trauma massive trauma and she nearly died as well herself just completely innocent in all of that and just thrown into this melting pot of doom anyhow that is all I have for you on today's case hope you're all doing okay hope you're well I am just so lacking in energy it's really taken it out of me this one like my legs just feel like like a sack of potatoes I feel like a sack of potatoes. I just feel, yeah, like heavy. Also, it's like something out of like a horror novel outside. It's really foggy, like really, really foggy. And I find that really eerie and like, ooh. and even, even, I don't even like it even in home. You know, sometimes when you're sitting and you're looking out of a window and it's rainy and a bit windy and it's like cosy because you're inside and you're warm and you're like, mm -mm, I like watching a storm or wind and rain when I'm nice and cosy in, inside in Granny's chair. But I like that. It's very like comforting to me. But when it's foggy, like you can hardly see, like you can't really see very far. Like it just feels like I'm just sitting there 
and any minute now something's going to appear like at the window it freaks me out I don't like this I don't like it I've been in here a while though so maybe it might have lifted a bit she hopes just not my favorite thing and I've got to drive later so two things housekeeping housekeeping two things first thing I never talk about my Patreon. I never do. I There are some videos up on there. There are some little posts and things like that. I think if you join, you can then just see anything that's already been on there. So that's cool. I think there's two or three little videos. They're kind of catch, catchy up videos. I do a gin box opening and things like that. I think I'm going to just do like once a month, I'll do a little day in the life of or something like that for Patreon. Like, it's another way you can support the channel. So if you want to, you can join Patreon and I will do my very best to get a little bit of something up on the Patreon like once a month, like a little video, a little vlog, something like that, or a bo or an unboxing, yeah, or a little car ride with me or something. That's the plan. And yeah, so do check it out if you want to. And it's much appreciated. It really is. And what is the other housekeeping? <laughs> what is the other housekeeping thing oh yeah just because obviously now there are I know that many of you have done given me some case suggestions and I have got a bunch I'm doing my list my list is there uh some of the cases that I that are on my list are like deeper I need to I spend more time sort of like they fester in the background and I do bits of research here and there because they're bigger cases some of them don't need as much but now that I'm doing two cases a week it would be so helpful and again very appreciated if you can just if you think of something jot it in a comment jot it in a comment somewhere and I will I'll get a notification I'll pick it up because yeah I, I do love getting case suggestions as well I'm like oh yes and it's nice doing cases knowing that someone has actually requested it as well I like that so yeah thank you please they're my two bits of housekeeping yeah it always feels weird you know like youtubery like like and subscribe <laughs> join my patreon I, I, I don't know it feels cringe it feels cringy i'm gonna go and risk it in the garden risk it in the freaking fog it is it's frightening it's not the biggest garden but I'm gonna be like <laughs> like you know when you do that like nervous little run oh 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 I'll be scared have a beautiful weekend and I will see you on freaking Tuesday that's weird to say but I will see you then okay love you bye